46, more than 9,000 kids are hurt by infant walkers every single year. Dr. Richard Chaffu is here to explain why. Well, first of all, thank you for being here this Good morning. Can we talk about some of the common injuries? What are we talking sure. about? Sure, you know, unfortunately, Christine, some serious injuries, uh, skull fractures, wow. uh, yeah, fractures to extremities, concussions occur. You know, thousands of kids a year end up in ERs from infant walker injuries. So what's happening? What exactly is happening? So what's happening, Christina, is, you know, when you take a, a very young child and you strap them into one of these devices, they can move quite quickly. And unfortunately, sometimes they're not very well monitored. They can get to the top of staircases, falling down, and imagine being strapped trapped into a device, hitting a concrete area, getting out into the pool area, unfortunately, or around a bath, and getting into the kitchen where they can pull uh, pots down. They can move much quicker in these devices oh. than they're normally, you know, toddlers are just kind of crawling around and so we can go pick them up and move them out of an area, but these can move like four feet in a second. So they're pretty pretty fast. I see. So it does, is this all brands of the walkers? It's all brands. Okay. Yes. So now it sounds like the, so the American Academy of Pediatrics, they're trying to get a ban right. on these. Do you think that's going to happen? I think, uh, well, I hope it does happen. You know, back in 2010, the actual Consumer Protection Agency came out with some alterations in the device, like some brakes and other devices, and we saw a reduction in the numbers of ER visits, but not an elimination. So serious, okay. serious injuries. The other myth, Christine, was that somehow putting an infant in in one of these devices would increase their motor skills, allow them to walk sooner. Okay. Studies have shown just the opposite, that really? actually these kids are not walking as quickly, not reaching their milestones because they're depending upon these devices. And pediatricians have said it's much better to use a stationary device uh -huh. as a play center, which is much safer. Gosh, and we've seen this for years. Yes. Everyone's been using them. Exactly. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, and this was really interesting, so there's a new study out saying that di um, household disinfectants could be making kids kids overweight. Isn't it it's amazing? So a Canadian study looked at households where they were using these antibacterial disinfectant cleansers on surfaces twice, uh, a, twice a week or more often. They found that in those situations, the children actually ended up having higher levels of BMIs or another higher incidence of, uh, of uh, obesity. And what they found was that, you know, you imagine the, the normal flora that we have in our gut is responsible for our metabolism and our immune system. Mm -hmm. When you use things that have antibacterial properties, it can alter our normal immune system and allow certain organisms that are relatively low levels to be at higher levels. And they found that those higher levels of those particular uh, microbes were associated with insulin resistance in adults, even in animal studies, and now, of course, in humans, it does seem to be that they are associated with a higher level of obesity. And that's so fascinating because it I feel is. like everything now, any type of soap, any type of wipe, everything's got this like antibacterial. Yes. And I'm going to be honest, that's what that's what gets me to purchase of these course. products. Of course. It's a marketing gimmick. And, exactly. And, and so now we're, we're saying, hey, too much is not good for you. Too much is not good. Exactly. Okay. So when you're talking about kids specifically, you know, uh, what, what ages are we looking so at? So the study actually began a, to study these children at three months of age. They had these uh, children at three months of age, the parents sent in a stool sample uh -huh. and uh, then they evaluated them up to three years of age and looked at their BMI, their, looked at their how their weight did and found and tracked them and found that these, the, the children what had the alterations in their normal microbes actually tended to be more overweight. Interesting point from the study was that they found that in families that used these eco-friendly cleansers, ones where they didn't have the antibacterial, uh -huh. that they didn't have these higher BMIs. We don't know if it's a cause-effect relationship because we're wondering, well, in these households where they were using these eco-friendly products, were they households where they tended to, you know, make sure their diets were better, they had a healthier sure. lifestyle, and that's one thing the study did not look at, the actual diets of these children. So it looks like more study needs to be done. It does. More research. Yes. In any case, it's very fascinating. Amazing. Well, Dr. Chef, we thank you so much for being here this good morning. Good to see you, Christian. Such good stuff. Thank Thanks. you. All right, still ahead, some of the biggest names from across the pond.